Like millions of other children worldwide, these two boys came into the world well shy of their expected birth date, meaning they spent the first months of their lives in the protective care of a hospital neonatal intensive care unit, or NICU. The boys were born at 26 weeks um, and six days, so they were born prematurely. They were here a total of almost four months, um, and it was tough. It seemed like that's how it was going to be forever. It seemed like there's no end in sight. It's a trying time for any parent, and a fragile time for the babies. As their tiny bodies continue to develop, they're at risk for any number of complications. For the Trusca boys, it was an eye disease called retinopathy of prematurity. I think it's scary because if it's not treated, it, I mean, it can result in blindness. And um, if, it, if it's allowed to progress too far, you know, there's, there's only so much you can do. So catching that early was really important. Early and accurate detection of the disease. That turns out to be the key in saving our vision from any number of serious eye diseases. And it's become an increasingly attainable goal thanks to a technology called Optical Coherence Tomography, or OCT. First developed in the 1990s, OCT allows doctors to see into the structure of our eyes to find hints of diseases like glaucoma and macular degeneration before they can cause us problems. Unfortunately, the nature of these OCT systems, their size, and how a patient has to interact with them meant that for many years, the benefits of this vision-saving revolution were not available to infants. This fact frustrated Dr. Cynthia Toth, an eye doctor who specializes in helping patients just like the Trusca boys. So here I was in an adult patient and looking at them in precise detail, what's inside them, how might this affect disease progression. And then the next day I would go up to the OR and examine a baby. And I'd look in and I'd put on the old indirect ophthalmoscope that's from you know prior to the 1950s and looking in the eye and that was my method of examination and it just seemed to be a disconnect. To Dr. Toth, the question was obvious. How do we give kids access to technology that's previously only available to adults? The answer would come from biomedical engineer, Joe Isaac. Driven by other research needs, Dr. Isaac's lab had already been working on creating more portable OCT systems. Our first handheld OCT probes in the late 90s, this was at Case Western Reserve University, there we were just interested in seeing how small we could make an OCT probe. Pretty small, as it turns out. And they developed the first functional handheld OCT device. They used it for a while for research purposes, until Dr. Toth took notice. When I saw that system, I was like, that's exactly what we need for the kids. With Dr. Toth's help, Dr. Isaac developed the idea further and helped form a company to produce handheld OCT systems. FDA clearance followed, and now several companies are making handheld systems for hospitals all over the world. As Dr. Toth had hoped, this has at last brought the benefits of the OCT revolution to infants in intensive care units. So with the handheld OCT system, we can now go to the NICU at the bedside, turn on the OCT, hold it over the child's eye, this, the instrument doesn't even have to touch the child's eye, so we're holding it just in front of the eye. So the child's in the security of being in the intensive care nursery, but we can come by the bedside and get a very precise exam. Using a handheld OCT system in just this way, Dr. Toth was able to stay ahead of the Trusca boys' eye disease during their long stay in the NICU. They have healthy, good vision. <laughs> being able to appreciate on a daily basis that we do have healthy boys um, you know, something we'll be grateful for forever.